Hey guys, Mike from Feed the Bot Marketing here. Uh, say I've had a few questions regarding mini chat to Calendly integration uh, and just how exactly I do it and how I do it so easily. Uh, and, and it is pretty easy. Uh, one of the biggest questions is, uh, do you have to pay for it? Well, not the way that I'm doing it. So um, Calendly has a couple different options. Right now I'm using the, the one, uh, one to one feature which basically means my calendar is designed to schedule one person for one time slot. Once that time slot's taken, then the next person has to schedule a different time slot. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you were doing things like a, an escape room or you know something like that, where you have multiple people in the same time slot, um, you would have to have a paid Calendly subscription in order to have that feature. But because I'm just scheduling discovery calls um, with potential clients and stuff, uh, I only have to have the one-on-one, -on -one, uh, which means everything's free there. Um, so w what I actually do is I pass pass through a bunch of information in the URL to Calendly, and what ends up happening is it pre-populates all of that for me. So all they really have to do is select the date, select the time, and everything else is filled out then they click schedule an event the best part about this is Calendly automatically takes care and sends them a confirmation which you can customize in your settings and it also can send reminders as well uh, you can even do text reminders if you have a uh, higher paid subscription for Calendly uh, again right now at this point in time I'm currently using the free version um, so we're, we're gonna go into just a little bit more of, of how exactly to do this here uh, so first we're going to go to my flow and just check this out. So uh, the first thing I, I start with is asking their first and last name. Uh, now you can actually just use their Facebook populated names because they are saved uh, in the fields there. Uh, then the next thing I do is ask them, uh, you know, what's the name of their business? And you can see my Calendly questions that uh, name of the business is not in there at all. Um, what I'm actually doing is just collecting that to pass to a Google Sheet later on um, for my reference anyway so I can do a little bit more research um, before I get on that discovery call you know it makes me sound better anyway after that then I ask them for their phone number uh, and then I save that to a custom field and then I have them confirm their email or type in a new one I save that to a custom field uh, and then we're going to talk about this here this is another question that I put in here just to show you how these these are called uh, radios um, so it basically allows them to select one out of the three so I, I said what thing do you prefer thing one thing two thing three so they can select that, any of those there so you can see thing one thing two thing three each of them go to the same field but the field gets updated with a different value I'm going to show you how important that is in just a minute um, now we're going to go into here where it says schedule a call and you can see I'm sending them to a website address well here here's Calendly and then here's my calendar feed the bot and then inside of that I have a specific calendar named discovery 30 so that's what that's telling it so what's all the rest of this stuff that's where the magic happens okay um, so these fields here where it says something and then an equal sign name equals email equals a1 equals a3 equals a2 equals those are all parameters from Calendly and we need to assign the values to those parameters using many chat so you can see each of these highlighted blocks here are actually fields um, that we can use to populate that so um, an example of how to add a field so let's just go in here so I'm gonna put and a so I got a four four equals and then to add a custom field I can do one of two things I can go over here uh, to tap the bracket sign and then find my custom field from there or you can hold shift and hit your brackets on your keyboards do two of them and then it'll automatically pull it up the nice thing with doing it this way is it actually allows you to do a search um, so you know for example I can type an example and it would pop up my example field and then I click that and you can see that it automatically puts it in there but we don't need that at this point in time however we are going to go over 
uh, how each of these works. So uh, first things first, let's go back to the question. Um, so you can see the questions are uh, first name and last name. This is actually passed through as one parameter and it's called name. So these two here pass through as one parameter called name. So you can see I pass two pieces of info into that one parameter and I'm separating them with a percent 20. Okay, so this is a field, this is a field separated with a percent 20. Think of a percent 20 as a space, right? And that allows it to say, okay, well, I'm going to put the first name, the value of the first name field here, the value of the last name field here, and then the spaces in between. Now, once I'm done with that, then I separate the next parameter with another and. Okay, so the ampersand there, and then email equals, and then my email field. Okay, so Calendly says this. Calendly says this is your email field. That's what they're looking for. They're looking for the email parameter. So we want to pass the email field as the value to that parameter. You can see I have email of interested put right in there. Okay. Then again the ampersand. And now we get into the fun part where it gets a little bit confusing. Not too much though. So this is name, this is email. Each question after that is just a letter and a number. So this is A1, this is A2, and this is A3. Now we're going to go in here and I'm going to kind of show you a little bit. So if I added a new question, you can see there are a couple other question types too. There's multiple lines and there's check boxes. I don't really deal with those two uh, just because it's a little bit harder to pass information from many chat to Calendly um, with those two pieces of information. If you want to use them, you definitely can. Um, my recommendation would be not to fill them out on ManyChat's end and, and not to have them as a required field um, when they come into Calendly uh, and then they can fill them out if they like. Um, only have your, your pertinent info um, as required information. Okay, So if we added another one line, right, let's put something in there. So now I have name, email. A1, A2, 3, A4. And so if I added another one, that parameter would be A5. Another one, that parameter would be A6. And then I need to make sure to define all of those parameters. So with each parameter, you see these ones have the asterisks here, so those are required. Um, you can select whether it's required or not. You can turn it on or off as well. Um, so now we're going to go back here and just kind of see a little bit how this works. So uh, A1 equals phone number value, A3 equals user ID. So I'm actually passing through the uh, Facebook user ID uh, again because sometimes things get screwed up, especially the phone number. We'll talk about that in just a second. Um, but what this Facebook ID allows me to do is pull their information back up in the audience menu or in the Google Sheets that I usually pass all the information to anyway as a safeguard. Uh, and then I can go and review that information and correct anything that's wrong, which is namely the phone number. And again, we'll get to that in just a second. Here. Uh, now the radios. Uh, how do you pass the answers for the radios, right? So thing one, thing two, thing three. Well, they're not going to be passed as thing one, thing two, thing three. So how Calendly sees this? So this is this is A1, this is A2. All right. So the answers to A2 looking for a value of 1 here, a value of 2 here, and a value of 3 here. If I had a fourth, it would be a value of 4. If I had a fifth, it would be a value of 5, so on and so forth. So we need to pass those values back many chat, or from ManyChat to Calendly um, so that Calendly knows which one of these buttons we've actually selected. So if we go back here and look where it comes to that question, please select what thing you like below. Thing one, thing two, thing three. You can see that I'm passing them. They're all the same custom field. That example, what thing? Question mark. But the values are one, two, and three. So if I select thing one, that's it to one. Thing two, two, thing three, three. If we go back to Calendly, remember, so this is question. A1 here, this is question A2, 
And the answer is 1, 2, and 3. So when you're passing these, and you can see right up here, right? So let's go. So there's a 1 there. Go over here's here's a 3, which is the Facebook ID. Here's a 2. So a 2 is passing a value of 3 because that is the field that we had designated was right here. Sample what thing. And because I selected thing 3, it set that value to 3, so that when it went to Calendly, Calendly knew that I picked thing 3. All right, pretty easy. Uh, now we're going to get to the phone number. So the phone number is the fun part. There are a couple ways to do it. So Calendly is looking for a 1, as in the country code, and then a 507, or an area code, and then uh, the rest of your number is behind that, right? So you can do it one of two ways. You can ask, specify, hey, I need the country code plus the area code and then the number. I'll show you what happens there. So we're going to preview this flow. Just going to go through it. So please enter your first name, Mike. Last name, Skin. Type the name of your business, Bob Shack. There. All right. So now here's the phone field. So let's say I'm one of those users that don't really listen. I just see, oh, enter the phone number, and I, I'll put my area code, my number. All right. Now we'll continue through as normal. It's already got my email on file, so we'll just select that, and then this time I'm going to select thing one. Right, so now I'm done filling out all the information. It gives me the button to schedule the call. So I go click schedule call. Pulls me right into Calendly. All I have to do is select the day, the time, confirm, and you can see everything is filled out. Remember I selected thing one. Thing one is selected here. You can see right up here, all of my information was passed properly. When I get to A2, which is this question right here, I passed a value of 1 because I selected thing 1, so that Calendly knew that I selected thing 1. But let's look at this phone number 555555. That's right, correct? Well, if we mouse over it, you can see now it thinks we're in Panama because of the 507 because we didn't add that uh, country code. There is an easier way to do this, okay? What you can do is go back to ManyChat. Zoom in here, find this. I'm going to take out these instructions, right? And I, because that's just silly. All right, so we're going to take out those instructions. Now, instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my URL here with all my custom fields. And where it says A1, which is the phone number, for the phone number field, I'm just going to manually add 1 in there. So I'm going to type 1. Now, instead of just passing the phone number, whatever the phone number was typed, I'm going to pass a 1 in front of that phone number. And because most people, when they type their phone number, it's it's never usually the country code first. It's always the area code and then the number. So we're going to hit Done. Now, I'm not even going to redo the flow. I'm just going to show you exactly what would happen if we passed the same information with the new URL. Now we're going to hit Preview go back through, we're going to schedule the call, we're going to select our day, we're going to select our time, and you can see now it's got the area code 507, and it's got the number behind it, and it says United States, because we added that country code. And you can see right up here too, so Discovery 30, okay, that name, Mike, space, asking, and email, right, got that. And then right here, A1, which is the phone number field, is the 1 because this is what we manually added. And then our phone number field, which had the rest of what we typed and saved. And that is the easiest way to pass information from ManyChat to Calendly. Uh, honestly, it works even better on mobile because once they click that button, it immediately pops up. It almost looks like it pops up in Messenger, that little Messenger window. Um, and then they can fill everything else. It's it's pretty smooth, pretty slick. Um, one of the concerns people have is, okay, well, 
the, the whole point of having a bot is keeping them in the bot, right? That's where the most impulse is. Well, yeah, you can definitely do that um, pretty easily because you know when they leave the bot, right? Because they're going to click that schedule a call button. You know that we've already pre-populated a lot of that information, so all they have to do is select a day or time. Um, so what you can do is put an action on that button because you know if they click that button, it's taking them right to the calendar. Okay, And then you can have that action add a tag and a rule that says, okay, when this tag is applied, do this. You can add them to a follow-up sequence that follows up in 15 minutes. Oh, hey, I see, you know, you, uh, we're interested in you know, making a call or whatever. Um, just wondering if you had any additional questions or anything like that. Then you can get them back to the bot uh, and then do whatever else you need with them there. So um, that's what I got today, guys. I hope that clears up um, a lot of the uh, misconception and confusion as far as the Calendly URL parameters go. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, uh, please feel free to let me know, and I can try to address them as, as well as I can, I guess. Um, thanks again, guys, for watching, and uh, happy bot building.